So, I haven't uploaded in a while, and I think I got an idea on what I can make a video about. Yeah, that looks like a good idea. Psych! So in this video, I'm going to be making a natural selection simulation and going through a whole week's worth of pain. Okay, so let's start by creating a new project and putting it in that folder. And then we have to create a HTML file. And along with that, we'll create a folder containing all of our scripts so it looks nice and neat. And now when you add an object to an array, it will draw it on the canvas with the given X and Y values as well as its width and height. I then created a border for the canvas so that you can see where the edges are. And after a bit under an hour, they will now bounce off the edges of the border and randomly come into contact with the food. Just for information, the black squares are called the prey and the green squares will be the food. How the simulation works is the prey have to find the food before the energy depletes or else they will pass away. The prey can sometimes have a chance of replicating and when this happens, their offspring's stats will mostly be the same as their parents with very minor mutations here and there. Every 5-ish seconds, a new generation will spawn with similar stats as the previous generation. What I mentioned earlier about the offspring will only come into play later when I change up a few things. After letting the simulation run for a while, we can see they start to get very small, but then gradually level out to a somewhat normal size. I ran the simulation once again, and this time they evolved into a much larger size. But the smaller they are, the less energy they'll consume, and vice versa for being large. The only upside of being large is that it's a more, much more likely chance that they will collide with more food, which does actually make sense on why they'd evolve to become like this. And then I realized something. This is probably the most basic looking simulator I've ever seen. I mean, it's literally just squares. We now have a grid that will force the prey to move only ever between the lines rather than wherever they want. That's cool, but it still looks really bland and boring. We can change this by adding a background. By law, I'm required to give you a disclaimer on terrible pixel art before I show it, but here it is. I mean, it's alright, but <laughs> at least it's better than a blank background. So now I've added it to the game, and I've also changed the color of the food from green to red. I'm still kind of thinking that I'll change the food to some other pixel art, such as an apple, and maybe give the prey a sprite as well. I'm also going to be adding a predator to the game to help control the population of the prey. The simulation wouldn't be right if you couldn't select how many prey, predators, and food that you wanted to spawn. To do this, I spent some time working on a menu selector with a title and text. I can then make it interactive after I add it to the game. I decided just to go with one of the stock fonts for the button text and for the quantity text, and it ended up looking pretty nice. Somehow it took me 3 hours to complete it, but now you can select how many prey you want in the simulation, as well as food and predators. I still need to add the predators to the simulation menu, so right now you can't control how many predators that you want to spawn into the game. The prey right now is still just an ugly looking square. So, maybe we could try and create a sprite and add it into the game. Uh, okay, I don't think the sprite is here to stay for very long. After very quickly deleting the sprite, I had a genius idea. It's a square inside of another square. Hear me out, it would look sort of like this. Uh, okay, um, <laughs> I must have gotten a value wrong. Uh, that's a bit better. There we go, that's what I was looking for. If you don't know what I was trying to do, which you probably won't, <laughs> I'm trying to make a gradient using the canvas stroke tool. The idea is by drawing triangles on opposing corners, it will look like the color changes very subtly throughout the square, thus looking like a gradient. This just adds a little bit more detail, which is a much better improvement than the old sprite. Now it's time to let the simulation run for a little bit and see what happens and how much they evolve. The genes that I've given the prey consist of speed, size, vision, energy saving and the time when they choose to reproduce. If the predators didn't exist in the simulation, then the results of the natural selection wouldn't be as impressive and would be a lot more various. You can see that to begin with they were holding on fairly well, but as soon as the predators started to reproduce, the prey didn't stand a chance, and thus went extinct. 
So for attempt two, we're going to be starting off with somewhere over 53 prey and two predators. For this particular time around, this generation only managed to survive for five minutes. We can see he's in a bit of a situation here. He's being attacked from all angles. Oh, he goes down. Oh, is he going to escape him? Oh, I think he's going to make it. Wait, no. No. Oh, damn it. You can see through this data that there was more deaths by the predators. So maybe next time I'll try adding less predators to the simulation. For many more attempts, the end result was very similar every time until... One time when the prey managed to survive. In this generation, they managed to coexist for over an hour, which is far more time than the previous generations. To get to this point, I had to tweak a lot of the settings and the chances, as in every generation, the prey would always go extinct. It's around here where the population started to drop. Thankfully, though, the prey made a good comeback and managed to reproduce a little bit faster to overcome this. You can see the size varies quite a bit, and there's a few large prey, and there's quite a few small prey. Being smaller seems to go well for the prey in this one, rather than being larger. After changing some of the settings, it's still very common for the prey to go extinct, but at least now they have a fighting chance at surviving, and they actually managed to stay at a stable population with the reproduction rate rapidly changing. The reason it's changed so much is because only the prey that reproduce quickly would actually survive. I tried simulating another generation, starting with 34 prey and 5 predators. The result was a lot more interesting this time around, and the prey managed to reach a maximum population of 250, while the predators maxed out at anywhere from 5 to 7 roughly. The predators came, came extremely close to extinction, with the lowest population being around 2.